guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to reading two episodes 9 and 10 of Dust Maiden of Amnesia, so let's go ahead and get started with episode 9 in 3, 2, 1, go. There we go. Oh my god. I still feel like, um, Yuko-san's evil spirit her true self, her emotions and everything, is going to use her great-granddaughter's body. Oh, hey, Momo. And she disappeared really quickly too, right? I wonder where she went. I mean, she comes at, like, the weirdest moments. I mean, let's go back to episode 7 and 8. You know, Nia and, <laughs> Nia and Yuko, they made up. And so, of course, it makes sense for her to come back. But, like, I'm still gonna say, she's gonna use Kirie to, pro um, to possess her body to try to get rid of Nia. I feel like that's the biggest thing. Going into last week's episodes... And the fact that, you know, her evil self went inside of Yuko's body, pushed Nia, possibly almost killed Nia, even though, yeah, he just broke a leg. And then having an entire episode where, you know, Yuko doesn't remember her, I mean, him, was so heartbreaking. Like, oh my god, it's only been a week since I've watched that episode, and I'm still torn about that shit. Like, that really hurt. I felt like I was watching so many other romance movies that I've seen before or something that is um romantic comedy-esque where it's like oh it's supposed to be funny like yeah or anything like it kind of reminded me of a watch to remember or um I can't remember the one with Rachel McAdams in it oh my god it's everybody's favorite freaking movie <laughs> oh yeah the other one with Rachel McAdams where she played a real life character. Those two movies. There's two movies she's been in where she's lost her memories and it's just so fucked up and horribly sad and you never want that to happen to anyone. Yeah, plus she's your girlfriend, so she gets to hug you. No. Of course he would say it so quiet. <laughs> Please don't. Yeah, please don't. Remember, they can't see her, so if you shout, everyone's gonna look at you like you are fucking nuts. I can see you guys so jealous. Hmm? Did you really have to do that, Yugo? Are you serious? There was no reason to slap your great-granddaughter. Girl, I, I, oh, okay. He wants to concentrate, honey bunny.
Because <laughs> it's cheating. I love her, but because of the fact is that they're officially not a couple, she is asking a little too much. I mean, hey, he's trying to get his test done. You didn't finish, did you? You poor baby. Well, of course, every girl her age can cook. Hell, I can cook. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. Not only embarrassing, but, you know, a little supernatural ass. We're like, what the hell is going on over there with him? I just do. Excuse me? You go, please don't get jealous again. I mean, you've already hit your freaking cousin, your, yeah, your great great granddaughter. Oh, it happened again. Well, oh my god. Oh, poor baby. Yeah, because normally she's never really cried before. Oh, oh. I mean, does that mean, like, her other, her evil side, her true feelings and everything are going back inside of her or something. But the spirit was still at the beginning of the episode and we're eight episodes in and it's nowhere to be found right now. on the wrong time. It's okay. I mean, imagine if Momoe came in and would she be able to see Yuko school uniform just hanging there? I mean, she can't see Yuko entirely, but the school uniform has to be like something. Come on now. Yeah. I get the fact that you don't know her, but still, that is you. That Your true feelings and everything. And it's okay if you don't want to remember that. Yeah. Tell you what, Mama. Huh? <laughs> no! Seriously? Did you really have to tell Momoe? I mean, well, yeah. She's a part of the club, so of course you need to tell everything to her. But the fact is, okay. A 
of course she's not even aware of her. She can't even see her. Let alone she's doing it on, like, mm, she's doing it the wrong way. I mean, she can't even, like, be like, hey, go see, come here. But Yuko, we're still on that. Sometimes I wish, like, mm, Yuko had, like, a diary that she was writing. Which, it seemed, because, like, wasn't there an episode that she did kind of have something? I wish she gave it a little more context and clues on her life. You teased him about it on the date you two had, you know, even though you can't remember. Mm -hmm. It's still, she's like a brand new spirit, but she just doesn't remember certain things. She remembers Nia, no matter what, but. <laughs> well, the one who's on your left hand side, boo. I mean, and do we really want to do that anyway? I mean, there could be another way without her not losing her memories this time. And because of the fact is, yes, she is getting angry and jealous again. But... Uh. Yeah. Because beforehand, she just like... Slapped the chopsticks out of Momoe's hand, even though she was still jealous, and just walked away. This time, her crying, she's more, I want to say, like, in touch into her feelings. She's able to convey, convey, that's the word I'm trying to say, convey her feelings and be like, this is how I feel. Jealousy, in my opinion, for her, is her biggest enemy. she'll be lonely. It'll be okay. Oh, baby. Something else is gonna happen. I mean, we're 14 minutes into this episode and the way that that little scene of her running away from the darkness and Nia is essentially her light, it feels like, it's almost like, okay, her her emotions, her feelings, the shadow that's still walking around, that is her dark self, the dark side that is coming to engulf her. Oh. Yeah, it's still coming. No matter how far she runs, she can't reach it. Oh, baby. 
I feel so bad for her. But she's stuck here. No matter how far she tries to run or anything, she can't go anywhere else. See, there were times, I think, like, in the beginning, between even last week's episodes, I felt like, oh, but you need to. Persona. <laughs> oh. Oh. Shit. Sad, hurtful, revengeful, possibly as well, while you were dying. also just say this like okay these two different sides of Yuko like are giving me feels to like our sweet Yuko baby Yuko the one that we all know and love that is the Takane of Idol Master and you know Shadow One that is Alveto best girl from Overload Overlord you love her no matter what those are her true feelings no matter what <laughs> I just wanted to say that Oh, Okay, but as I was trying to say before this popped up, um, I was kind of thinking, and this could possibly still happen, maybe either by the end of this, if it gives it like an anime-only ending, or maybe even in the manga, I was thinking that Nia possibly was going to kill himself in some weird way um in order to be with her and that they would be together in the school forever because uh, honestly let's think about this a little bit you have a ghost and a human and it's 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 cute it really is but at the same time it can't really work because of the fact is they're from two different worlds they're star-crossed lovers no matter what She's Yoko, just emotion wise. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, your Yuko is just a baby. Of course he does. Yeah, but not his Yuko. Mm -hmm. Mm. I mean, she read about that because no matter how many times you go and run away from her, she's still going to come back. Mm. See, what I want them to do with episode 10 to 12 
they need to show her POV of this, the, the little memories that we're seeing. Instead of seeing them as memories, truly, oh god, it's happening again. Um, I need a full episode on it. I'd rather see that than just little bits and pieces of the puzzle. I need the whole freaking puzzle, I'm just saying. No, don't be sorry, Hugo. It's okay. It's gonna be fine. Oh, fuck. Honey, you did something not good. I feel like I'm watching one of them late night scary movies. <laughs> Like I was like 10 years old and I'd be really freaking scared. Yeah. Huh? There you go. That's what I needed. That's what I needed. Now just set that up for episode 10. This is what I needed. I needed him to go back in time to see what truly happened that day. How Yuko died, even though we know, but still there's more to the story. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god. Hmm? Is he Yuko? Oh my god. He is. He is. Oh. <laughs> I mean that that's a little surprising I wasn't expecting it to go like that I was assuming that he was going to be a spirit and he was just going to follow her around but I am so fucking glad that we're doing this because this is the only way we're truly me as a viewer um going to get that context for her because even though yes we've seen her dead body we know that that's where she had her last you know breaths of life and everything where she truly has rested for the end of days even up until now but going into the past is literally going to help to see what all happened that day why the people who killed her killed her because there has to be some reason it's almost like uh, okay this movie that i'm about to talk about is like hella underrated this was a movie that came out, I think, in 20... Either the year I graduated, 2012, or 20... to 2010 to 2012, maybe. I don't really remember. If you remember the movie Jennifer's Body and how it was about a woman who ended up turning into a succubus, feeding on men's flesh in order to live and yada yada ish like that, it gives kind of feels towards that because there's a point where the um and this is spoilers to jennifer's body of how she becomes this demon sucking uh eating succubus ish um so if you don't really care go ahead and go on to the next freaking movie but i'm gonna kind of wait to have this part come up this is a cute picture i don't know why the fact that both you girls are here last minute Okay, so there's a point in the movie where the band who eventually gets famous and known for the movie and ish and the tragedy that happens, they end up sacrificing um, Megan Fox character Jennifer in order to become this big band. But they didn't know that she wasn't a virgin. She pretended to be a virgin in order to be sacrificed. So she didn't know what was really going to happen that night. And in the end, instead of her... Um, dying she becomes a succubus in order to eat men's flesh for the rest of the movie it is a so good it's a really good cult classic film if you haven't seen it go watch it it's just like one of the best things even though a lot of people just didn't like it from the lady who made juno because juno was a good movie and the people were like just shitting on jennifer's body but it's still an amazing movie um and it seems like that because we're looking at the last few moments that Yuko-san is going to be living in her life before she gets killed and before she is end up, you know, being like a ghost stuck in the school for 
um, decades until she finally meets the love of her life, aka Nia. But the fact is that we're going to be seeing it not only in Yuko-san's POV, but also in Nia-san. Because like I said, I would have assumed that this episode would have ended with him being as a spirit instead of hugging or embracing um, Yuko's evil emotions or really her ugly side of herself and going back in time to Yuko's final days of life. I love the fact that they're doing that. It's really good because still, like I said, it gives me context to so many things that I needed. It's almost like how when I watched um, Bakemon Agatsuri for the first time and I was so freaking confused about like every little thing, the relationship between Agaragi and um, Shinobu and everybody was like oh yeah you just have to watch the movie to understand that and then when I finally watched the movie I was like okay now I understand why he's so indebted to Shinobu why he you know um oh Shinobu his life and why you know no matter what between Shinobu Senjurahara and Hanekawa like no matter what even if you want to say um no matter what at the end of the day uh Senjurahara is his true wafu, but now no matter what, all three of them in their own special ways are his one true wafus. But it's like three different versions of like root A, root B, and root C. It's like, okay, if I take this, this is who I end up. If I take this, this is who I end up. And if I take that, yada, and yada, and so forth. But still, I honestly cannot wait to see what's going to happen in episode 10. I, the one thing that I kind of really don't want to also see, um, with the killing scene because I'm guessing we are going to see that I think that's probably going to be maybe my least anticipated scene for this next episode um I don't want him to experience that the pain of these people killing her so like if you've seen other movies where it's almost like the the main character has to go back in time or any other anime character from whatever series has to go back in time to get the questions that we've been wondering um the answers to the questions we've been wondering ever since how many episodes we've been into the series, they go back and they're living as that person for their final days or their final hours or final moments before they die. Um, from some movies that I've seen in the past and as I said, anime is when we get to that killing scene, the person who goes back in time, they also feel that. So sometimes when like someone's arm gets cut off, someone's hand gets cut off, their feet, someone gets a cut, that person also feels that, that as well. And so I think that's going to really possibly hurt me and stuff. When you do it in a horror movie, it's good. But when it's something like this, when it's like a horror romantic-esque, it's going to make me feel bad for both of them because they're both in pain. And I don't want that because it's just going to make me like almost tear up and I don't want to tear up going into episode 10 I already teared up last week and I don't want to do it again like with this next episode but I'm really scared for both of them because of the fact is they are one person right now for a next episode until you know eventually he you know um Yuko's true feelings like snaps him out of it and be like okay you finally saw what happened that day now you know why um Yuko's emotions her you know her dark self is this way and why she kind of pushes it away and like anyone who gets close to her and eventually she gets you know all up in her feelings even though now she's like all up in her feelings kind of and not technically her dark self she's still her cute baby self her little Takane um she's okay but her albedo side is more of the bitch and like she's there and she's gonna do everything in her possible way to bring herself together as one again I don't know I mean we ain't really gonna know until this next episode but I think by the end of episode 10 Nia is really going to um more of understand Dark Yuko in my opinion or Dark Yuko Abeto in my opinion I don't know but at the end of the day when we get to the next episode I think that's how we're truly going to see that I think it might be a little hard for him to see this because he truly loves Yuko and sometimes you have to see someone who you truly love in those last moments of life I think it's going to be 
really, really upsetting. He might even cry. Hell, I might end up crying. I don't know. I mean, you guys know I cry almost at anything, whether it's like a little cute moment or it's somebody freaking dying. Like, I I'm a mess when it comes to certain characters because I take them so close to heart and it it's a lot harder when you watch a character die because you're like, oh my god, like, they're gone and you just can't believe it but yeah go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you guys in one second for episode 10 okay episode 10 in three two one go Mm. <laughs> He's so cute. Oh my god, I love him so much. Precious baby boy. <laughs> He's such a gentleman. <laughs> oh god, this might be like the saddest episode for me i don't know i mean we're only minutes into episode 10 and i feel like this is going to be the most horrible moment in any anime show that i've seen where i might be like truly this this is gonna probably hurt me a lot i i know it i fucking know it i know it it's gonna hurt me more than like any other anime that i've seen i'm probably gonna finish the series and be like god damn it's gonna be like two weeks later and I'm like, damn, I'm still emotional from this show. <laughs> oh. Cause you look at her and you think that this sweet, innocent girl who was just possibly in the wrong place at the wrong time wouldn't have a bad fate like this. You know, cause like when we first, when I first saw her in episode one, I was like, what the hell happened to you to deserve what you got to get killed like were you a bitch and there were times where still up until before this episode i was thinking this girl was a bitch to so many people to the point where like yeah we weren't revenge on this hoe because she a bitch and we just gonna kill her i i get that but it, she's just a nice sweet innocent chick and so i mm. huh Yes, basically. Oh, there's the bell. So it was more of a bracelet. <gasps> you caught it, call. It's pretty. Yeah, her mom. Or, her... yeah. No, her, um, no, her aunt, 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 aunt. No, that would still make her her mom, yeah. Because Yuko is her her aunt, yeah. I'm making myself confused right now. I just can probably confuse myself in episode nine too. Oh. So, are you telling me you were sacrificed by your own village? Or what if it was Yukariko that was supposed to be a sacrifice? <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh, hey, kitty. Maybe. Mm -hmm. 
downstairs? Asuchan. Are you sick? So cute, the baby. What? She means by getting sick, right? Or like possessed or something? Asa. They're all dead. Uh, yeah, you are sick. No, uh, hey, mm mm. Oh. Girl, you are lying. Your death flags are everywhere. We know that you're gonna die. By the end of this episode, you're gonna be dead. I feel like Asa's gonna be dead by the end of this episode, too. Is it Asa? She really does. If Kitty go, if Kitty had longer hair, she would look exactly like her, just like a twin. And plus, if Kitty was more girly esque, exactly like her. And where are they going? I don't know why, but like the way the adults are, you know, like being shrouded in. Has anyone seen um, Freddy vs. Jason or any of the Friday, you know, the 13th movies? Um, specifically more of Freddy vs. Jason with the fact is that they all ended up... Um, killing Freddy because he was doing stuff from what I remember supposedly doing something to the kids and so they were like wanting revenge on him and killing him and stuff like that and so they were hiding to everyone else like the kids and everything oh no guys it's okay Yeah, because that's the only way to not have the plague be exposed to others. Mm. No, because you're going to plan something. You're going to make a sacrifice. Because we know that's how this is going to end. Mm -hmm. But see, the question is, how many girls are they going to sacrifice? There you go. There you go. That's why you don't build on top of burial grounds. Anything, nothing. I've learned that from like any movie that I've seen. Specifically horror movies because you don't know what could happen by burying under something. Come on now. That's like the rules. It ain't the 
rules of surviving a horror movie, but that is a rule! You need someone who's healthy-esque. The club room? The club room. safe for now. Oh god, this episode hurts. I'm not even crying, but it hurts. Because if Asa was alone the dead of night, they would have took that time to kidnap her and immediately killed her. But see, now it feels like what they're going to do is not only take Asa, but either... Well, we know it's going to be Yuko, that's the thing, because Yuko, does, she's dead. Which we do know something is going to happen to her. Oh. Of course. I mean, and this is probably the last moment that they had with each other before Yugo san passed away. Yeah, so in touch with her feelings and everything, wanting to speak out against and try to help everyone, you know? Asa? You've got to be fucking kidding me. No. No. Before you took a bath, right? 
shit. She's gone. God. This is why you don't. Oh, God. It's a trap. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Which is Yuko. see this I really don't want to see this cuz it's gonna Oh god What? I didn't do anything wrong. You were just the wrong place at the wrong time.
Alexa? Not you, Alexa. Shut up. Anyone would. But they're all dead now. And that's the one thing that she doesn't know. This was a very emotional episode. Very, very. I, 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 I wasn't expecting that to happen, especially that last little bit. I would like just for a moment. I was like, hmm, mm. like, but the red woman can't be Asa. Asa was merely a tool to bring Yuko. She was a trap. It was a trap trap. That's what it was at the end of the day. In order for Yuko to be the sacrifice, they had to get her. This is why, no matter what, you don't have two people. And the three three people were in a house. You don't have two people immediately taking a shower and one being alone by themselves. You have one person take a bath or a shower. And the other one who is currently watching her, let her watch her until you get out. Then y'all switch. You watch the girl and the other one takes a shower or a bath. And then when the girl who is sick or boy who is sick, then you go into the bathroom with them. Because you know what? If it was me, I'm be like, I'm going to be on your butt 24-7. I'm going to watch you do every little freaking thing that you need to do. Because we don't want to one minute see you and then the next minute, gone. Like nothing. Like you haven't even existed. This episode fucking hurt me. Like... Oh. The last time I was this hurt was between when freaking Archer died in the Heavensfield movies and freaking Latina with the situation of her and me crying over that. Like, those, I, I, there's so many other moments in animes that I've seen where I have been hurt to like the brink of tears and you're so emotional because when you're watching it you're like damn I feel I, I feel that I know how you feel like I can reconcile with that character but like this you're feeling not only anger and hate towards like a character or these people the ones who sacrificed her who threw her down the stairs for her to break her leg and instantly die where her body currently is right now you feel some sort of hate towards them why would you do that yes in order to save your village but did you have to do it the way that you did there's always another way even though there's so many people who are like no there is no other way but no matter what there is always another way without anyone who could have gotten who would have been sacrificed yuko would have been able to live her life yes she wouldn't have been able to meet Nia where she is right now and she's happier now that she's around Nia and that her and Nia can be together but still there is something in between them the fact that he is a human and she is a ghost they can be together but they still can't be together at the end of the day no matter how many times he leaves and goes home 
and he's going to come back the next day. There's going to be a point in time, and I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm not saying this to like say this is what the manga is going to be. Because I think what I'm going to do is probably when I finish this, because we now are in the finale for these next episodes. Um, one of two things could happen, and this is just a little prediction of maybe for like the manga. Let's say... Mia graduates and he promises her that he'll come back and he continuously comes back until the point where it gets a little too complicated for him to come back and she's gonna feel that remorse that anger all over again I don't think that will happen I feel like it's gonna give a good ending where they can be together forever no matter what despite whatever in the world he's gonna do or whatever in the world Yugo's gonna do because I feel like one of them Nia is possibly going to make this ultimate sacrifice with however these last two episodes 11 and 12 are gonna end because um it makes you wonder like I, I think what the manga's done already right so it makes you wonder like how far was the manga at the time of this when this anime came out um was it close was it far is it gonna give it an anime only ending because it's very similar to how I felt about happy sugar life because at that time when happy sugar life was out and the manga was still being done and the anime finished before the manga and um, ended and you're looking at Happy Sugar Life and the way that ended and it gave it like this sort of like anime ending um, experience and then you read the manga and the manga ends the exact same way with oh god should I talk about this you know what fuck it okay this is spoilers so if you don't care about the spoilers thank you for watching and have a good day um, in the end the main character the girl who ended up kidnapping or finding the, the little girl um in the show, the blue hair girl, but the pink hair girl who ended up ki uh, taking the little blue hair girl, um, her and the blue haired girl at the beginning of episode one, they're, they're on top of a building and they look like they're going to kill themselves. Well, in the last episode, they do kill themselves in order for them to be together forever. But, um, the pink haired girl dies and the blue haired girl, she actually survives thinking that she is she's reborn as the pink haired girl or something like that. I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen happy sugar life and sort of read happy sugar life because I read it like kind of months before the show was airing. So I knew a lot of things, but I didn't know how personally the manga was going to end. I may have to go back and reread like the last few chapters because like I said, I barely really remember ish, but it was one of those like controversial manga uh, animes that everybody was talking about. It was good. Some people didn't like it. Some people were like, eh, but it's one of those fucked up moments. You're looking at like, oh my god, like this is how the show is really going to fucking end. But with two episodes left for the finale, plus an OVA, um, it just really makes you wonder, how are they going to solve this? We're now at the climax of this with two episodes left. Because what I'm going to do next week, since next week is the last two episodes plus an OVA, I'm going to put all three episodes in together as one big finale and ask. But... It's just wondering, how are they going to solve this? That's the big little question that I'm wondering as of right now. But we ain't going to know until next week. But until then, this was a really good episode. Very, very emotional, heavy driven episode. And I loved it, even though it was very sad. I'm glad that we got to see you, Kariko. Asa, even Yuko in her final moments in her life, didn't really want to see the moments where she was running away and saying she was going to die. She didn't want this. Like, please help me. Like, that really hurt the most. But I needed to see that in order to, to see what had happened next and such, to see the legend of her. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episodes 9 and 10 of Just Made Another Amnesia. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially all next Monday for everybody else and next Friday for the Patreons for the finale. Bye, guys.